Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, host Catherine, Catherine Noor. Today, Today, our, our topic, topic is, is partnering with esports next, sports planning guide. With me is Christopher Silbernagel, writer and social media manager of Sports Planning Guide. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for having me, Catherine. I'm excited to be here. All right. So, Chris, what is Sports Planning Guide? Sports Planning Guides, uh, well, we've been around since 2009. But what we do is we try to connect uh, event planners with the destinations that they want to host those events. So, for example, someone goes out and says, I want to host this youth sports tournament and I want to do it in the Midwest. They'll go look on our website. We'll direct them to places in like Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, et cetera, to try and find them the best type of facility for their sport for them. Okay, so I understand that you are partnering with eSports Next. Tell us about that. Really excited about that. We we just started the partnership this year. And what we'll be doing is we'll be taking that aspect of sports tourism and putting that into the esports uh, industry. So all the kind of old school mindsets of trying to connect those people with the type of facilities and everything they need, but putting that in the esports perspective, but also bringing as well with our writers and, and the perspectives we have and the knowledge base, because uh, we do have the esports knowledge um, and putting that into in-depth research and putting out great articles for esports trade association with their esports next brand all right let's show the video So tell us what we just saw. What you just saw was a brand video for us. It's just kind of like what we do, um, how we connect the, uh, the, the those destinations with those event planners, um, and and just the overall aspect of of bringing that kind of sports tourism brand to to the market because it's it's such a huge huge market. Um, Specifically, in terms of dollar count, uh, as I think it was just last year, Sports ETA, which is the uh, like head body of sports tourism, they actually estimated it at not, a little around ninety-two billion dollars. So it's a huge industry, and considering we're going to take that and put it into esports, I think that's a good like gateway for that. Okay, so your your um, magazine is called Sports Planning Guide, um, and do you consider esports to fit within that? Not exactly. So what we'll be doing is we'll be actually taking uh, a, a bit of a step away from the sports planning guide as for that, and we're going to give it its own highlighted uh, package. So SPG will still be its sports tourism piece, but then the esports stuff will be branded specifically as Esports Next Magazine, which will be directly tied to Esports Trade Association. Okay, so that's part of your uh, partnership with uh, Esports Trade Association, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. So um, why did you feel that it was, why did your company feel that it was advantageous to partner with Esports Trade Association and Esports Next. Uh, well, I number one, I went to the Esports Next conference last year. It was just to cover them for um, kind of like our interest delving into esports. We didn't really have the mindset of diving this deep back at that time, which was around August last year. Um, but we were really impressed with how they they had that show, how they ran that show, all the guest speakers they had, and everything. And so we started negotiating with them um, 
more particularly because they're also a Chicago, uh, Chicago land based uh, uh, organization like we are. And we saw this as advantageous to team up to really kind of, I don't, don't want to say dig our claws, but really like solidify that market and really dive in and, and, and really try to, to do something that not too many people, I guess, really talk about, which is esports tourism. I don't think that's really a huge, huge part of the market yet. It's really about the streaming aspect. Um, and I think that more and more we're going to see more destinations bringing in people for those types of events and not just streaming them live. Sure. You know, I think you're absolutely right about that. I think that there will be more, especially now that um, we're done with COVID. I, you know, I can see esports being uh, a kind of a destination. And especially with these huge tournaments that are held in South Korea and in other countries, these huge arenas in Europe. And, uh, you know, kind of um, Canada, I mean, that are kind of popping up all over the world. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Um, and even local stuff. Um, by local, I mean statewide. Like we have uh, Arlington, Texas is one of our uh, clients and partners, we prefer to call them. Um, and, you know, Arlington had built one of the first major esports centers in the country. So, um, I think more and more we're going to start seeing places like that. Uh, Rally is another one that's really on the ball with esports. Um, uh, we're building a surge uh, center in Chicago. I don't know if it's been delayed, but it was supposed to be 2024, but they're popping up all over. And I think we're going to just see more and more of that, especially because Asia has just been on the ball. I know that Saudi Arabia even had like, uh, what was it, like a multi-million dollar, uh, multi-billion dollar event or something. I can't remember the exact uh, layout for that, but I think the prize winners got like 500,000 each or something. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, I think it's kind of interesting when you talk about the Middle East. I, I actually just attended um, the World Association of Sports Management uh, Conference in uh, Doha, Qatar. And oh, nice. Yeah, and actually I had five presentations at that conference that I gave, and I do see the Middle East as a huge, they have a huge future in sports and actually esports as well. Um, I think I just saw that Abu Dhabi is, um, they're uh, creating or have created a venue, a big venue for esports, and I, you know, I they're putting a ton of money into um, that uh, industry, their tourism industry for sports. So I think that that would include esports. Is that on your radar? It is on our radar. We have been talking with Dubai. Um, we've been talking with Saudi Arabia. Um, those are the only two so far, but there's nothing concrete yet. But we we are aware for sure that those are huge markets going toward, uh, going for the future. And as you said, not just in esports, but in sports in general. So in um tell us more about the magazine um for esports um trade association so this magazine is going to be an exclusive for the event i guess you can consider it um as a gamer uh, a collector's edition in a way um because people still enjoy print no matter how much we we say we want more digital and i personally like more digital myself i don't want to go off topic too much here but you know it's easier to keep track of things but people like special edition things that they can physically hold especially if they come to an event and what this magazine serves to, to as a purpose for is not just giving people who attend and their members a membership directory um facility uh, insights on, on actual esports facilities across the country, but also in-depth articles and features, especially in, in particular, I can give this away um, in just this one, is that we are going to have an in-depth interview process with a couple of CVBs across the country and how they see esports being played out in the future for travel and tourism in general. And I think that's huge. Um, it's, it's great for the industry that more and more destinations are paying attention to to esports as as a as a market. Sure, you know, and it, you know, it's interesting to focus more on esports business in this show. Um, but you know, part of the 
esports ecosystem is tourism. And and I you know I I think that it's kind of you know when when I look at your video, I notice that some of the sports that you feature are volleyball, and uh, uh, there was uh, I probably sport climbing and uh, some others that are not like baseball, basketball, football. Do you do you kind of like to uh, feature more unusual sports or do you also include um, those more ball sports that are, you know, huge stadium events? So it's really what the destination wants to have us highlight for them, but a lot of them like to be diverse. And I think that's great because you're not going to just make money off of the ballparks or the or the arenas that are going to have basketball or volleyball. Um, they do want to put like rock climbing. They do want to put, you know, uh, 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 hiking and even uh, anywhere essentially that you can host an event if it can if it can be an event to, like, you know, let's say a triathlon somewhere, then they want to market it. And I think that's a good idea. Um, one thing I'd like to say on that, too, is an interesting question that came up to me recently was whether we think that um, esports can, would conflict with something like like ballparks or anything like that. But it's it's not. And that's why we want to separate it, because physical activity and these types of things don't conflict. And I like to bring up this as an example is, is for example, video games and actual sports. Uh, and by that, I mean like physical activity sports. So you can have an esports uh, uh, activity and event, a real sporting event with like FIFA, I would say, but people who play FIFA tend to like soccer. So there's no really conf there's no conflict of interest there. So I think it plays all together really well. So I that's why I see it as such a huge market is because it it just complements every single thing going forward. And and you know what? Actually, you could probably even combine esports and traditional sports in the same issue because, like, even now I just read this morning that um, Roblox or um, or uh, Minecraft, I can't remember which, or maybe it's both, are focusing on Wimbledon. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and and if you look at during the pandemic, every traditional sport they had they kind of transitioned to a um, kind of a gaming or you know esports kind of um, application, and you know like Madden, um, like like FIFA, like, uh, you know, a lot of these, they have that component. So you can combine the two. And when especially you're looking at different generations, you know, the older generation might, might be more interested in, in focusing on the traditional, whereas the younger generation, uh, the more esports application. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's true, um, and, and I think that's actually why our our business is trying to get into that because sports tourism, um, in terms of numbers on on individuals that are in the planning aspect, they tend to be around the ages of thirty five to around sixty, and it's a pretty big gap. But I mean, it's definitely an older crowd, um, but that can't sustain itself, so it needs to have. A new opening for that and i think that's why more and more of those destinations are getting into that and i think that mixing the two two uh two aspects together would definitely be more beneficial than than anything absolutely so how are um now i assume that for your magazine that you sell sponsor i mean you uh sell ad space and we do yeah yeah and are you um fine that advertisers are really interested in a shift to esports. They are. Um, we see a lot of interest in advertising for both. Um, for this particular magazine, it's 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 not been as easy, but it's because we kind of got this off on a late start. Um, that's not to put it down or anything. Everything's going smoothly on that end, but it's just. We have the interest. It just depends really on, let's say, timing. Um, for example, you know, certain 
destinations and CVPs have a certain threshold of time that they have to like get certain numbers in. But in terms of the interest of saying, hey, going forward for your newsletter for Esports Next, for the next year's uh, edition, we want in. And I think that that's fantastic because it shows that these CVBs are starting to become more and more aware of that. Sure. And I would think that um, Esports Next, with all of its advertisers, all of its sponsors, that they would take. And um, so you're attending Esports Next. What are you excited about about Esports Next? I'm excited about quite a few things, actually. I'm excited to see their speakers. I haven't seen all of them that they've listed up, but I know they just keep popping up more and more. But they always have really, they had really interesting discussions last year. Um, one thing I really love is that they have a custom jersey. Um, and they put love into that. You know, it's not just something where it's like, you're going to slap the logo and some sponsors and then there you go. You know, it, it has specific things to it. And if, just one example I'll give is like last year, you could flip the cuff of the sleeve and then it would have a little icon that said plus 10 luck on it. And I'm like, that's awesome. It's a little subtle thing, but it's just great. And I'm wondering what kind of little subtleties are going to have this year. Are they going to do like the more popular uh, uh, athletic sports jerseys now where it's like, you know, uh, some kind of message on the back of the collar or something. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I'm also looking forward to networking there because networking is a huge deal. They put a lot of great effort at Esports e Next to, to put all these people in a room, in multiple rooms, and, and get them talking. Um, and it's it's not just like you're going in there to think about, oh, um, I just know these certain aspects of how esports run, et cetera. For example, when I went there last year, I didn't know that there was a huge, huge market for esports lawyers. I'm like, I didn't know that. So I ended up going from one interview aspect to the other, and I came away with so much more knowledge within just the span of, let's say, 15 to 20 minutes of doing a speed uh almost like speed dating they had like this little thing where it was like you went from one person to the next and just spoke to them for a couple minutes and some people will you know make an impact some people might not but i'd say for the most part i learned a lot there and it was really cool yeah i'm i'm looking forward to going as well and i am coming all the way from hawaii so it's kind of a, a big deal and uh, what i'm looking forward to is i'm really looking forward to the cubs game the day before and um, there's a lot of opportunities. So the weird thing is my one year, I mean, no, it's three year anniversary of hosting the show is coming up in about a week. And Congratulations. Throughout, that, throughout hosting the show, I've had many of the people that will be at Esports Next as guests at, on my show. So now I actually get to meet them in person if I haven't already. And so I'm looking forward to that. And it looks, you know, um, there's also an elevator uh, pitch um, competition, which I think is really interesting. We get to hear about really exciting new businesses that people are, are um, starting and that they're pitching. And um, you're right, there's a lot of really good content but i'm really excited about that jersey too i had forgotten all about it but i i didn't realize that it had a little that they had a little surprise i know i voted on a style and i noticed that my um my votes were different than other people's so i have a feeling that that my favorite won't be picked <laughs> I, I think they did finally finalize it. I don't know if you picked this one, but it has like the Chicago uh, famous that every Chicagoan is obsessed with adding, but it, it's true. It's you have like the uh, four stars on the flag and 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 it, it's a huge it's a huge symbol for us. So I totally understand and I, I get why it, it, it got, but it also looks good. Um, I do know it's really cool also that you get to have like a gamer tag or your last name, or you can have it blank, but I chose my gamer tag. So I think that's going to be What's fun. What's your gamer on. tag? My gamer tag, depending on what uh, I'm playing on, is usually Kalinowski. And um, if you're interested, that's just a reference to a song from a band that I've liked for, for the longest time. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore, but um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So what, what do you play? Um, in terms of music? 
No, a uh, game. Oh, games. Oh, my God. Right now I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I've just been obsessed with that. Um, in terms of competitive gaming, the last thing I really, really got into was Mass Effect. And I've also been playing online a lot with a lot of people through the uh, Switch Premium that they have, the uh, expansion pass. I've been playing Goldeneye because I love Goldeneye when I was a kid. I used to play multiplayer contests with Goldeneye all the time. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fantastic. I, I kind of like to ask um, my guests what they what games they play because, I, you know, we, we need to find out, like, where to find people. So what other um, esports um, venues or destinations that are that you're most focused on besides esports next and and uh, your your neighborhood, Chicago? It, well, I'll be attending Nintendo's uh, live function in Seattle, so I'll be covering that for uh, for sport for well, it's technically for esports next, um, but it'll be for the newsletter. Um, I'll we'll also be looking at college uh, esports facilities because college uh, esports programs are becoming a huge, huge deal. Um, they have a fantastic contests for college, and it's a great way for for young uh, uh, collegiate players to to learn all the fundamentals that come with being in in competitive sports in general is you know you know empathy uh, uh leadership um teamwork all kinds of of great things like that so i'd say collegiate esports is is definitely something that we're really looking forward to diving into because a lot of our partners and in, in our destinations they have a lot of places they want us to talk about and that we're excited to be talking about you know, I think that's smart to get into collegiate esports. Um, last I read, um, there's about 400 collegiate esports programs. It might have grown since then, but, and I assume it's grown since I last looked at that. Um, 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 but the thing is, you, you know, your, um, your brand will become familiar to those collegiate um players and those involved in collegiate esports and ecosystem and so as they get out of college you know you can capture them as as uh um you know your um audience as well yeah it's like i said in 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 an earlier part is that you know the sports tourism industry is is an older group and i definitely think that grasping that you know, out of college, fresh out of college group is, is really important for the industry as a whole. And, you know, again, not conflicting with traditional sports, something that is easily able to not be conflictive, con uh, have a conflict with one another and really complement one another. So sports tourism, um, it's kind of uh, finally able to come back after the pandemic. How how was it during 2020 to kind of more recently for you? So I st I really got into this around 2021. So I came in just after the the, the really part, bad part of the pandemic. But I did intern for them uh, prior to the pandemic. So. It was tough, I think, all around for just about everyone in the sports tourism industry and tourism in general, just because of all the shutdowns, you couldn't do anything. Um, a lot of people couldn't even have outdoor events. It was crazy. Um, it got to the point where, uh, you know, and then it's this is not exclusive to Sports Planning Guide. Uh, it's 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 for a lot of places that do publications online or even in print, and we do both which I think is unique for us because we do print, um, but I digress. Um, we, we, it's, it's really a lot of people, a lot of people in that industry look to free work. And I think the people who bought into that and, and helped keep that industry afloat by doing free or free write-ups for those types of companies, they're the ones that got rewarded. And I think I'm a good, I'm a little, I'm a pretty good example of that because while the pandemic was going on and I was doing other work, I was still writing for them, even though I was just, you know, post intern and I didn't really need to, but I wanted to because they're good people and I got the job after. So it was, it all turned out well in the end, but I don't know how well that turned out for 
all print and, and online publications. A lot of them have disappeared, just like we've seen a lot of, you know, other things get hit by the, the pandemic when it comes to tourism, like, you know, airlines. It, it was madness. Yeah, and, you know, um, print magazines have um, had lots of challenges anyway due to digitizing. And, you know, there's a lot of change. And, you know, the competition between videos and actually reading something. Um, and as a writer, you probably understand um, that very well. Um, but, you know, one thing that we wanted to do today with this show is to really plug um, eSports Next for eSports Trade Association. And it's going to be held um, um, August 21st and 22nd um, next actually almost next month, but uh, this year. Um, is that, are those the dates? They yeah. are, 21st to 22nd, yeah. And then the day before is the special Cubs game. Um, but that's, of course, you know, uh, 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 it's your choice whether you want to go. I think it's worth going, though. Yeah, I can't wait till that. It seems like a great networking event. Um, exactly. And, you know, if people are interested, they can go to Esports Trade Association's website and find out all about it. Um, but how can uh, people, our viewers, uh, find um, your magazine? They'll be able to find it soon. Uh, we'll be putting it up on our website um, in a special tab selection. And then I believe Esports uh, Trade Association will also have it up, probably on their esportsnext.gg website, but I can't confirm that yet. Um, everything will be available in uh, uh, just like page formats, but also a, a digital guide. So it's like a flip book. So people can feel like they're actually having the magazine in front of them. Fantastic. Well, Chris, thank you so much for being here today. And I wish you the best of luck. And I can't wait to meet you in person. Same. Thank you so much for having me today. It's been a pleasure. All right. And thank you uh, to our viewers for joining us today. Um, in two weeks, my guest will be Ryan Hawks, a uh, coach at GameSync. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.